Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the We Empower You meeting that we do every single Wednesday. And I'm so happy to be welcoming so many of you who've joined us from around the United States right now. We might even have some folks joining us from across uh, into Africa tonight. So we do this meeting at 3 p.m. every single Wednesday. Join us by going to weempoweryourlife.com. Click on the calendar tab to join us for this meeting. The Zoom link is right there. And without further ado, I'd like to share with you a little bit more about myself. I'm Bettina Carey. I'm founder and CEO of We Empower You, the community, as well as the movement and the upcoming We Empower You Global Virtual Summit, which we host every single quarter until next year when we might be hosting it quite a bit more. So thank you all for joining us here today. And I'm going to introduce our uh, upcoming uh, guest presenter. Our speaker today is none other than Patrick Snow. And of course, tonight's uh, program is Getting That Book Inside of You published featuring best-selling author and publishing coach Patrick Snow. And, you know, has staying at home got you interested in getting published for the first time in your life? or even for the second time, or maybe your book needs a little bit of a refresh. Do you wanna turn that book into a bestseller? Well, you really need to be talking to Patrick Snow. He is, of course, a multiple book published co uh, coach. In fact, he has multiple books uh, right here that he will be talking about. And his second book though, The Affluent Entrepreneur, is, has been purchased by John Wiley and Sons, and he's also the contributing author of Chicken Soup for the Soul, his newest book, Boy Entrepreneur, was published in 2014. And he's also recently published a 26 audiobook set on Audible titled Becoming a Best Selling Author. So, welcome to the stage here, Patrick. It's so great to have you. Go ahead and unmute. I love having you each and every time. Well, thank you, Bettina. I'm thrilled to be here. And thank you for all of us, uh, all of you for joining me today and joining Bettina. I'm thrilled to share this time with you. And uh, just a shout out to many of you that I recognize. So thanks for spending this time together. Absolutely. And I'm going to ask you questions as well and keep everybody muted for the moment. So I'm going to remove that pin there. So I met you nearly 20 years ago, Patrick, and you've been on my stages year after year, uh, even through COVID, uh, through divorce, through marriage, you name it. <laughs> we've, you even moved to Hawaii about five or so years ago, and we've still continued to be in business. And I find you to be one of the most talented individuals that I personally know, and the coaching that you offer around book publishing is bar none the best that I've ever seen. So tell us a little bit about how you got into book coaching and also in publishing your own books. Well, thank you for those kind words. Um, I was married for 20 years and uh, been single for 10 years now. Um, and I just recently engaged. So I found the woman of my dreams, Amy. And uh, so that's good. So not married yet. So number two coming up at some point, don't know when. Um, we don't have a date yet, but how did I get into this? This industry um, was kind of a mistake, I guess. I grew up desiring to play professional football. That was my goal is to play in the NFL. I never dreamed of becoming a, a writing coach, a publishing coach, a book marketing coach, professional speaking coach, coaching coach, entrepreneurship coach. Never did I think that would be the case. And so the way this happened was by mistake. Um, I spoke for years and years and years, and I couldn't get paid. I think I gave 300 speeches in my early 20s, and I failed 300 times to get paid. I got free breakfast, free lunch, free dinner, free pens, free food, free parking. And so I heard back from the universe that if I want what others have, I must do what others have done, and I'll get what others have gotten. Because I kept asking God and the universe, why couldn't I get paid? Why couldn't I go from free speaking to fee speaking? And the answer I got back was, you know, write and publish a book. And then you'll get your speaking engagements to take off. So that's exactly what I did. I spent five years and $20,000 writing and publishing my first book, Creating Your Own Destiny. And uh, this book was out now, it's been over 20 years. And uh, as a result of that, um, I did a book launch party, um, had 65 people attend that. 
And then soon thereafter, people started asking me, well, who is your editor? And what about proofreading and typesetting and cover design? And what about ISBN? What about Library of Congress? Did you print in China, Canada, US? How'd you get featured as a cover store in USA Today? Forbes Magazine, New York Times. How'd you sell a million copies? How, 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 how? And, uh, and I thought, oh my goodness, you know, the boy's mother was working 80 hours a week and I was working from home as an entrepreneur and speaking here and there. And I didn't want to be one of those speakers that was gone every week and missed my entire kids, you know, raising their year of those years. And so the publishing coaching just fell into my lap. So one after another, I started helping people kind of with these hundred decisions. I tell everybody there's a hundred decisions to make in the process. And I help my clients make 100 out of 100. And so as we got more and more books published, I think we're up to about 1500 or so plus or minus over 20, 25 years. More and more people came to me. And as a result of that, I was able to stay home, raise my two boys and uh, have a life in terms of having freedom. And so that's how it all got started. So great question. <laughs> well, I love the answer to that. And uh, which brings me to one of my other questions. And that is you ended up by you ended up writing one book because you'd been advised to write one book. And, you know, you have this philosophy, <laughs> to write one book well and sell it and promote it for the rest of your life. Tell us a little bit more about your process to, to focus on one book. Well, originally, my book was going to be called How to Create Your Own Destiny. And right before I got ready to take it to print, I thought to myself, you know, I really don't know what I'm doing. Maybe I should get some coaching. So I discovered Dan Pointer, and he is the modern day grandfather of the self-publishing industry who wrote the book, The Self-Publishing Manual. And Dan Pointer taught me that you can't take a book to the press that starts with a how-to. Um, your subtitle should be how-to. And I'm like, wow, that was great advice. And then he gave me the ING rule. And I learned about that later from another writing company. So it became creating your own destiny, how to get exactly what you want out of life. So as I began learning more and more and more about this, Dan pointed out that the average author in a lifetime only sells 250 copies. And I was like, wow, that doesn't seem like a whole bunch. And he said, well, the reason why is people write and publish a book and then Oprah doesn't call. So they abandon that book and they write book two. And then Dr. Phil doesn't call. And then they abandon book two and they write book three and book four and book five. And they might spend 30 or 60 or 90 days marketing each book. And so Dan's message was write one book and then spend the rest of your life updating that book with new stories, new chapters, new aha moments, new book awards, new testimonials, new chapter thickness. And so this is the first edition of Creating Your Own Destiny, 140 pages in, in soft cover, just kind of flimsy. This is Creating Your Own Destiny in hardcover 10 years later in its 10th edition, now 320 pages. And then I sold the rights to John Wiley and Sons in New York, and they republished it under this ugly puke green and ugly mustard color. You know, they've got the Illuminati sign in there, and I'm kind of really bummed about all that. But nonetheless, um, that's what you do when you sell the rights to a New York publisher, you lose control. So you can kind of see how the book has evolved over time. And so what I tell my clients is you write one book and then focus on making that book a bestseller. Dan Pointer's definition of a bestseller is 35,000 copies sold. And so I give all my clients permission once they've sold 35,000 books, then they can write book two. And then when they sell 35,000 copies of that, then write book three and then write book four. So that's kind of been my philosophy. And um, I've been blown away as to how this whole thing works because most people, they literally write and publish a book and they abandon it a few months later. So I want you to look at a book is 5% of your success of your book is writing, and then it's 95% promotion. So imagine giving birth to a child. It can take nine months to birth a child, nine months to, rate, to write a book and publish it. And then as parents, we spend 18 to 22 years of our life raising our child. And I want my clients to raise their book in that same way. That's fantastic. You also believe that the book is really of a, a door opener um, much like a business card is, and explain a little bit about what you mean by that. Well, I think the world's greatest marketing secret in the history of all business is to write and publish a book, and then number two, strategically gift that book to the people who have the ability to hire you for speaking, coaching, and consulting, and then number three, you follow up because the fortune is made in the follow-up, and number four, you follow up because the fortune is made in the follow-up. Those are the four steps to succeed in this business. 
And so the way that I discovered this was that, um, and I tell people all the time, your book is an arrow. Your book is an attraction magnet. It's a physical website. It's a lead generating tool. It's the greatest marketing secret in the history of the world. So when I discovered this about 20 years ago, I landed my first $5,000 paid speaking engagement. I, I've been in Maui for eight years, but I spent 21 years in uh, living in Seattle area. And my first 5K speaking gig was in Florida. And I mailed the signed copy of this flimsy book, you know, and uh, signed it to the meeting planner. And sure enough, they called me back and said, we want to book you to speak. And I was shocked, like, oh, my goodness. So they paid me five grand several months in advance, round trip airline ticket, car rental, hotel, food, expenses. They had wine and cheese, you know, in the hotel room. And I don't even drink. But still, I thought that was pretty cool. And then I'll never forget what happened. I did what my mentor taught me to. I showed up early and I stayed late and I got a stand in ovation. And I almost, you know, speakers, most times we don't get stand in ovations. But that's one of the things as a speaker coach, I teach people how to organically create that experience. So afterwards, I went to the meeting planner and I said, well, there had to have been other speakers. Why did you book me? And she said, oh, yes, Patrick, we had 47 speakers from all over the world that sent us an email. And every one of those emails embedded in their email was their highlight video. And we didn't have time to watch all of them, but we watched about 10 videos and we liked all the speakers. They were all great. High energy passion, enthusiasm. And then your book showed up in the mail. And I said, well, what do you think of the book? And she said, we loved it. That's why we booked you. And I said, no, what do you think of the content of the book? And she said, well, there's seven of us on the speaker selection committee and not a single one of us had time to read your book. But the only reason why we booked you is you sent us a book and nobody else did. And in that moment, I thought, okay, that's the secret. So I went back to Seattle and I mailed out 5,000 books over 20 years. And that's how this whole thing exploded. So yes, you're absolutely right. A book is the business card. It's a physical website. It is the world's greatest marketing secret. So I want you to hoard gold. I want you to hoard silver, hoard real estate. It's okay to save your money and hoard cash. But I want you to give your book out as a marketing tool. Give it away like Halloween candy, strategically to the people who have the ability to hire you for speaking, coaching, and consulting. And when you do that, you'll have all kinds of windfalls that will come your way. That's fantastic. One of the other things that I hear in some of your meetings is this quote, famous quote by uh, Abraham Lincoln. Share a little bit about that quote, because I know that can be an inspira inspiration to those that are listening and watching. Well, when I wrote my book, I think I started, I was 26 years old, still just a kid. And today I'm 52 and still feel 26. But my point of it is, that I wrote my book because I had two boys, seven and four. And I thought one day as a speaker, if my plane went down or the train went off the tracks or whatever else, that I'd have this gift to leave behind to my children so that they would know what their dad stood for, that who I was. And they might not get it in their early, you know, adult life or early years, but maybe when they're an adult, they'd eventually, you know, get this. And so I stumbled across a quote from Abraham Lincoln that says this. He said, quote, the only way the dead can teach the yet unborn is through the written page. Think about that. The only way the dead can teach the yet unborn is through the written page. And people don't realize this, that your book can become a legacy marketing tool for you. And long after your time on earth, the book will continually organically grow and and, and I love Zig Ziglar's books and Ogmandino's books, and they passed years ago, and yet they're still selling. So the shelf life of a book in soft cover can be, you know, five or seven years, and then eventually it crumbles and falls apart. But a hardcover book, a shelf life on that, that can last for 100 years, 200 years. Uh, Debbie Waldeck's on the phone, and I have all three or four of her hardcover books on health and wellness. And they're pristine and spectacular. And those books are going to last 250 years. And so that's it. The book becomes the legacy. It becomes our contribution to the world. It becomes our soul level mission and goal. And people for generations to come can benefit once our days on this earth have passed. I love it. <laughs> it gives me inspiration, that quote. Um, so how can folks get a hold of you? You have a Monday call that you do every single Monday. Uh, that's a great place for us to start the conversation. But in general, how, you, how do you work with people? 
Well, I give anybody and everybody a complimentary, no obligation consultation. So whether you want to write a book, you want to publish a book, you want to become a best-selling author, you want to be a speaker, coach, doesn't matter. Anything in this information empire industry, I coach people through that process. But at the end of the day, again, there's a hundred decisions to make, and most people make 20 or 30 decisions correctly on their book. So we do a lot of fix and flips, meaning that you can buy real estate and it's all beat up and shag carpet and you know pink bathroom fixtures. And then you redo the bathroom and the landscaping and the paint, and then you got a brand new house and you sell it and make a ton. We do a ton of that with books. People have taken their book to the marketplace, poor title, poor cover design. They missed out on a couple of key chapters. So we do a book makeover and help them out. So whether you're writing a book or relaunching a new book that you've already written, we can help you out. The best way to reach me is to send me a text with your name and your cell uh, phone. I mean, your name and your time zone. Uh, my private cell phone number is 206-310-1200. Again, that's 206-310-1200. Give me your name and your time zone and your text. Let me know that you heard me on the Bettina Carries. We empower you. And I will gladly offer you a complimentary 30 to 60 minute call. And also, if you want to see more online, you can go to becomingabestsellingauthor.com. Again, becomingabestsellingauthor.com. And any of you listen on YouTube or those of you that are live here today, every Monday at 10 a.m. Pacific, or 1 p.m. Eastern, I do an inner circle Q&A call that's open to the public. And that's a great way to kind of sample, you know, what this is all about and get your questions answered at no obligation to you. So that phone number is 605-475-3200. Again, 605-475-3200. And that PIN number is 108 three seven two two pound again one zero eight three seven two two pound so join into that call and get some of your questions answered and it's also a great group because we have anywhere from 20 30 40 people that dial in and you'll get to know some other people's books and works and a lot of great friendships come out of that that's fantastic in fact tonight what we have planned for you is to do a, a monday morning call here in this session and how that works is that Folks can either put in the chat um, their question, and when you put your question in, you also will introduce yourself, and then uh, Patrick will get all the questions asked and answered at the end of that. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, pick on TU, because TU actually uh, knows what we're talking about here, <laughs> and TU, if you can unmute, go ahead and introduce yourself and model this uh, asking a question and introduction that we do, and then we'll follow that up with uh, uh, Debbie, who's also been uh, a part of the, the calls, and then we'll go from there. And to you, feel free to ask a question about the coaching and I'm sorry about the coaching, speaking, and teleseminars because we just talked about that, and I think there was still a little bit of uncertainty there, and I want to make sure I get all that answered. Okay, I, I would love to. First, I have to give Patrick huge accolades because. I just recently received my first order of my published book and it's beyond, uh, it's beyond beautiful. I absolutely love the results. And if it's okay, I'll just turn my back for a minute and grab it. Yep. <laughs> Put it away, but here it is. And what I love about it is that Patrick answers all those hundred questions, uh, questions I had no idea about, okay? And here's the inside. It's this beautiful pink. And on the back, it's a little bit about me. And when you take the dust cover off, everything is on the front and the back. Absolutely. You know, I have had so many people compliment me on the quality of the book and the content. I, you know, he, we went through a few edits and I thought, I have to do this again. You know, <laughs> But everything that Patrick taught me, all the golden nuggets, now when I hand it over, I'm proud to show someone my book. I'm proud to have my name on it. I mean, look at the, I mean, the quality speaks for itself. And when I, I did a recent lunch with uh, four other members of uh, Patrick's 
how do we say it? What do we, your clients, they all family. have books. Family, Ohana. Family, our, our, our Ohana, yeah. And, and the beautiful thing was that every single book we put on the table and people were looking at it going, wow, those are hard cover. Those are beautiful. And, and the whole thing, everything that you teach us, top quality and you know it speaks volumes on uh, your experience your um, expertise and your your wisdom the way you shared it with me I and I thought yeah okay Patrick I really don't want to do another edit but I did and I'm so glad I did so on that note my question is now that I have this I birthed my baby right and I'm going to be raising my baby it's still very very infant it's in the infancy stage. Um, where I go from here, my question was, do I coach? Do I um, speak? What is it that I should do next? Because at the moment, I'm overwhelmed. This is a beautiful book. I'm honored that I have you as my coach. And give me some guidance. We were talking about it earlier on where I go from here, because this is just the beginning. Perfect. We will talk. We'll cover that. Excellent. Thank you for that great question. And thank you for that wonderful endorsement. And we'll also talk a little bit about the difference between the self-published books that we do and the New York published books that the big publishers put out. We'll talk a little bit about that difference. Great question. Who else has got questions? Bettina, go ahead. Uh, Debbie can go next. Debbie Waldeck. Okay. Angel of Clarity. <laughs> I, I don't uh, have a question, um, but I think what's really relevant here as it relates to Nigel, Patrick, We Empower You and the Income Activator, the platform, and also maybe addresses to some point what Tiu is saying. Uh, Tiu, I, I published, as Patrick said, these three books. Uh, 10 years ago. And they certainly serve me well as it relates to them being that business card. From there, you can go anywhere. And I know Patrick's going to answer your question, whether you're, you're speaking or being a coach. I mean, you can go anywhere. That is your choice. As it relates, however, to the We Empower You Summit and why I'm here is that I realize that part of what held me back was having a system in place to handle all of the responses that I would get to you as an example, you might get a spot on a radio show in Denver. This is a true story that happened to me shortly after publishing my book. And I had a website to you, but I did this radio show from Seattle in Denver. And in that hour, there was more than a thousand people that went to my website from that radio show to you. They were excited. And I had no system in place to support, to do anything with them. Nothing. And I'm like, holy crap, you know, I spent way too many years trying to create all the systems, you know, learning about evergreen webinars. And I mean, just miring myself in these details, which really was, uh, you know, it was, it was what I did. And so at the end of the day, here's what I, I'm doing. All right. Is that I have this website that's been built with Lee. I have created referees, a directory of people like yourself, right? That when I'm speaking, people can go to. So where is the next step? It's being on radio, on your podcast, getting that voice out, that message out. The question is, do you want to be the person that one-on-one -on -one counsels or coaches each of these people that you're reaching out to? Or do you want to be a voice that speaks to millions, and it's interesting to you, if you have any kind of methodology or something that you have created in your book, and I apologize, I've not read your book yet. I look forward to reading it. And maybe someone else would want to use that methodology to help people. Do you know, I actually have meetings right now. In fact, I'm doing webinars right now. And this is a little different than you, but I think you can kind of see the connection where I'm actually doing events for physicians, patients so that the patients will be able to learn, Bettina, what you know, the My Perfect Plate about your customized blood sugars or Body Mind Blueprint. So guess what? I don't have to teach it. I get to be on radio. And when people come and say, I want to know more, I get to refer them out. And that's really what We Empower You and the Income Activator was all about, was to do exactly what Nigel is saying, is let your 
mouth be your money maker. So I know uh, Patrick will probably give you all, there's like millions of strategies, but I'm just wanting to stay very true to what it was that we started June of last year with the with We Empower You, the Income Activator, and how to utilize what it is that I have just to get out there and to be that voice. But remember the system that's underneath it. Absolutely. Thank you so much for bringing that out. Um, Love it, love it, love it. Um, Next up, we're going to bring on uh, Joanne Richards. She's got a book too, not with Patrick, but she might have some questions still tonight. Oh, (laughs) Um, yeah, I I self-published and I worked with a book, a book marketing mentor in the California Bay Area who set me up with some of the steps on how to get going. And I have a website. And now I'm working with um, Nancy to you know, be in a better position to get more podcast guesting uh, spots. So I, I've had quite a few so far. And I'm, you know, have my media one sheet done. And um, it's like, I, I, it's funny because I've had several bad marriages. So we're kind of focusing on that and what I learned from all that. And so that's a whole new thing. Um, so that's a whole new thing. How do I monetize that <laughs> and, and what I learned? So we're, we're working on that. I also, I, I, I've done a lot of speaking in the past about UFOs and aliens and paranormal stuff. And I'm doing more of the paranormal stuff now, but um, so I'm kind of separating the two because, you know, with her, it's like, okay, this over here is fun. And this is probably more of your moneymaker and that's fine. Um, so I, I'm learning like everybody else without trying to spend a million dollars on you know, <laughs> how to do the, how to do the best thing to get more books sold and, and figure out then how to level that up. And Yes. Do you, do you also have a question for Patrick? Um. Not yet. I mean, but I, again, next steps are, are good because, okay, I, I'm, you know, learning all the, I'm learning a lot of tricks on getting on podcasts. So then again, what's the next step? You know, it's like, so that, yeah. that's always a good question. It's like, how else do you, you know, sell more books and all that good stuff? Yes. And while you're here, Joanne, because we are colleagues and friends, both Patrick and I and others with Nancy Jutton, um, we both finished her five day challenge last, was it two weeks ago now? Visibility lab. Yeah. Focused on our uh, podcast visibility lab, uh, right. we focused on our uh, one uh, media one sheets. We focused on uh, getting that positioning and also leaning into podcast guesting. So here's a little plug for Nancy. I'm going to go ahead and put it. Right. A- a post in the chat. If you wanted to get the five day challenge that you missed, she has it on sale for life at 197. So I will put that in the chat. And if you're watching on Facebook or YouTube, I'll, I'll put it in the comment section so that you can have access to that. That was a fantastic opportunity for one and all. It was and I'm doing her broadcast your brilliance bootcamp too. So you know, getting more bang for the buck. So, but I'm always, you know, I need to learn that the other next steps that are needed. So absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Now let me see who else is here. How about we go to now to Nigel Henry, uh, angel of activation. That is, <laughs> whoops. I'm sorry about that. Uh, I'm going to put up Nigel first. I'm going to leave Susan up there too. You can go next, Susan. There you go. Is this a question for Patrick? Yeah, introduce yourself first. Oh. Not too too deeply, though, because I'm going to introduce you officially later. <laughs> All right. I'm Nigel, the angel of activation. And, uh, oh, I was listening. I like listening to Patrick. As I'm listening to him, I'm actually writing notes for my own presentation. He's such a, he represents the model of what I talk about. So I get data from him. Now, one of the things he did say, I heard, was about the title, the how to thing. And I actually, um, in my presentation, which I'll talk about, I 
uh, most of the world. How do I, uh, invite, I um, reflect people away from that question um, <laughs> because of its impact on the mind. Um, so I guess the question that I'm formulating is, what, given that most of us are on the planet making a difference, right? That's our intention in our message to contribute value to our audience. What are some titles that I could use that don't start with how to or have subtitled how to? Just that in general, your, your wisdom on that. Very good. I'll give you the title formulas and uh, we'll go from there. Excellent. Okay, I think we have time for one more question. Bettina, okay. what do you think? How about somebody raise their hand who's in the audience here? Was oh, Susan? oh, actually, Susan. I'm sorry, Susan was going to go next. Hang on just one second. Let me lose track of my job here. <laughs> All right, Susan, go for it. Oh, wow. I don't, I don't know where to start, but uh, I didn't really have a book in mind. Actually, I did have, I do have a book in mind, and it's since I'm an artist. I have painted many different styles and just transition. It's like a, a life journey. And so I thought it would be fun to show the transition um, in a book to show how I painted when I was maybe 12, okay? And then over the past however many years, 50, 60, no, <laughs> many years, um, and why I transitioned. And basically it would be a picture book. Um, I am a writer deep inside and I, but art is my first passion. It's my very, very top most first passion. And so, yeah, I mean, that's, that's about all I have to say. <laughs> very good. We'll talk about that. Excellent. All right. At this point, I'm going to have Patrick answer the questions. And this is the format, like I said, of his traditional Monday meeting. So take it away, Patrick. You want me to go about 15 minutes? How much time? Yes, I want to make sure I get them all in. Minutes. Yes, 15 minutes. Okay, so we'll shoot for the top of the hour. So the first thing that I want to do is talk about the difference between your basically all of you have three publishing options. And most people think that there's the New York traditional publishing route, and then there's the self-publishing route. But there's actually a third route and a fourth route. And if you don't make this decision correctly, you stand almost no chance of making money in this business. And this is not all about making money. It's about serving your readers, serving the world, making a contribution, as uh, you know, some people have said here. And so based on that... Um, the problem with the New York publishing route is that it can take forever for that to happen. I was rejected for 16 years before I got my New York publishing deal done. One literary agent friend said, if you have a uh, book manuscript complete, you have a one in 1,000 chance of an editor in New York reading it. If they read it, you have a one in 1,000 chance of them buying it. If they buy it, the average advance coming out of New York is like $1,000, maybe 5,000 if you're lucky. I mean, if you're a professional athlete or a politician, you're going to get a whole lot more, but that's the average advance. But what they don't tell you is they also need to buy 10,000 copies of your book at $10 a piece directly from the editor or the publisher. So now you're looking at a negative $100,000 IOU. So that's an option for some people. For me, I didn't want to go that route, but as a publishing coach, I decided I would have more credentials and credibility if I sold out to the New York publishing industry. And that's what I did. The problem is the New York publishing industry, they do everything as cheaply as possible to keep the manufacturing costs down. So for example, they might do soft cover when in, in, uh, in, in self-publishing, we do hard cover, but we actually do both. I'd say about 90% of my clients do hard cover, 10% do soft cover, and there's strategies for both. But the New York publishing route, they might use a 40 pound paper, which is thin and brittle. And you can see the ink bleed through from the other side. Also, it's a yellowing paper. So over time, it becomes more and more and more yellow. What we do in self-publishing was we use an ultra bright white paper, a 60 pound paper. And that way you can't see the text on the other side. And 25, 40 years later, the paper is still bright white. This book is literally 
15 years old, 18, uh, no, probably about 12 years old. And look how bright the pages are still. There's no yellowing there at all. And so this book, I don't know if you can see this. Can you see the difference in the paper? This book is a New York published book that's about five years old. And this book is a self-published book about 12 years old. So you can see that this is already yellowing up. So that's what we do. We look at what the New York Publishing benchmark has set, and then we do everything better than them. This technology of uh, taking the dust jacket and then removing the dust jacket and still having the book board printed, this is called image wrap technology. Very few printers have the ability to do this. And it costs an extra like 10 cents a book more, but it's so worth it because if someone throws the dust jacket away, or it gets wrinkled, you still have that to go. So that's what we do. Everything that you can do in publishing, I give my clients the opportunity to get all the bells and whistles. TU did those pink end sheets to add some coloring and pizzazz. Sometimes we do that. You don't have to do that, you can. I did the white end sheets on this, uh, but we can do colored end sheets. So your second option is the, the internet publishing route. And I'm not going to mention any names because we're being recorded, but typically those companies are all scams. And if you Google self-publishing or if you Google publishing the first thousand companies that come up, they're all scams. And the reason why they're scams, is they're going to charge you two grand to 20 grand upfront in advance to publish your book. And then at the end of the day, they don't give you the finished files of that book back. And the reason why they don't want to give you the finished files, because whomever controls the PDF file of the cover and the PDF file of the text they control the print run and whomever controls the print run controls the profits. So when you order your books in low volume, your books should be 10, 11, $12 a book. But these companies will charge you 18, 19, $20 to print your book. They turn around charge you 20 and they print at 10. So if you go out and sell 10,000 books, they just made $100,000 on your back. So what I coach and teach is to eliminate all third party middlemen so that you work direct with the printer. And this is called self-publishing. This is the option that I've chosen to market and coach people on. And it's the only way to guarantee you get published. You own every single right of the book. You make every last decision. If you want pink soft cover, you get that. If you want purple hard cover, you get that. But what we do is we trump them and we do everything better than what the New York Publishing does because my clients are willing to spend another $1.50 or $2 more to print the book to have a Mercedes-Benz, BMW, uh, a Lexus, a Porsche. That's what we do is high-end books. Whereas they don't want to have a drive around and beat up, you know, old, you know, Chevrolet that's 30 years old with rusted out floorboards and whatever else. So that's the difference. So next question that TU asks is, where do I go from here? Do I speak or do I coach? And the answer is you can do both. You don't have to make a decision. But right now, with the challenges of the uncertainty in the marketplace, there's not a lot of keynote speaking engagements to do at corporations or at associations in person. So I still want you to speak, but speak on Zoom. I was doing 50, 60 paid speaking engagements a year, traveling all over the world. I think I've spoken in 48 states of the 50. I've spoken on four continents. But in the last 18 months, all my speaking is done via Zoom. So I want you guys to write this down. My mentor, Bob Moad, taught me this. He said, when you speak, business happens. When you speak, business happens. When Susan speaks, business happens. When Nigel speaks, business happens. When T.U. speaks, business happens. So what I want my clients to do is understand that when you don't speak, you don't sell books. When you don't speak, you don't drive coaching and consulting revenue. And by the way, you're going to make a little bit of money on the book. Maybe you make 5, 10, 15, 20 grand a year on your book. Maybe you get really, really talented and you make $50,000 a year on your book. Even $50,000 is probably not enough money to retire. So I look at the book as a hook or a lead generation tool to attract speaking, coaching, and consulting. And a lot of people don't want to do coaching. Well, you can do group coaching. On my Monday calls, I have, say, let's say, average of 30 people that dial in. So I give up one and a half hours of time between 7 and 8.30 Hawaiian time on a Monday, and I deliver a 90-minute message. 
and we have 30 people on the line, I've just delivered 45 hours of coaching. So coaching, when you leverage technology, you can coach the masses. And oh, by the way, I have an online course. And people, millions of people could take my online course and sign up for that tomorrow. So I backed it up with systems like they were talking about earlier. And so keep this in mind as you do this, because it's all about creating systems. But the reason why you write and publish the book is to communicate your credential and your authority to the world so that you can get millions of dollars of free publicity, so that you can use your book as an attraction magnet. So I want you to speak. So in a perfect world, what I'd suggest all of you do is every single Tuesday night, the rest of your life, go to your local community center, your local coffee shop, and do a little event. And for example, Tio's book is titled Healing the Holes in Your Soul. So Tio, you could do a Healing the Holes in Your Soul, little workshop, little teleseminar, or little workshop in person. And it's a 90 minute thing. And you might have five or 10 or 15 or 20 people that show up. And let's say you have seven people. So you give 99% value, 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 value. And then at the end, you make a 1% sales pitch where you make a coaching offer. And you might do 5,000 in coaching sales, 10,000 in coaching sales, 15,000 in coaching sales. I've done this numerous times where I've made $20,000 in coaching revenue. And we've had 14 people or less in the audience. So you don't have to have 1,000 people in the audience to make 20 grand. You can do it with five or seven or 10 or 12 or 15. So the point of it is that's what your Tuesday night should be. And then every Thursday night, you do the exact same thing that you did in your workshop. But now you do it either as a Facebook Live or you do it as a teleseminar. But you open it up to people all over the world via the internet where people can dial in. All they need is a phone line or an email connect or internet access. So Tuesday night is your local community. People from an hour around can drive to see you. Thursday night, you do the same exact thing over the phone. And if you don't wanna do a webinar, you don't wanna do Zoom, that's fine. You can just go to freeconferencecall.com and get a little teleseminar going on a phone line. I've done three or 400 of those. So that's what your Tuesday night should be and that's what your Thursday night should be. And if you do that every week, the rest of your life, you're gonna make 100, 200, 300, 400 grand a year in speaking, coaching, consulting. So that's the strategy. So that's where I would go from there. So let the universe guide you as to where you go. As a coach, don't say, I only coach on this or only coach on that. Ask your attendees, ask your phone callers, ask your audience, what do you need? They will tell you how they want to be coached. So I have all of my clients choose about six or eight or 10 different areas of coaching that you have expertise on. And when you have six or eight or 10 areas that you have expertise on, you're not making the cardinal sin. A lot of people, they become a coach. Oh, I only do weight loss coaching. I'm just a weight loss coach. That's it. Just weight loss coaching. I lost 25 to 50 pounds. I'm only doing weight loss coaching. Well, that person could also do spirituality coaching, health and wellness coaching, nutrition coaching, exercise coaching, self-love, self-worth, self-esteem coaching. As Dr. Michael Gross taught me, right? So you all have six or eight or 10 areas of expertise. So focus on those. And every now and then someone calls me up and says, Patrick, I'm suicidal. I'm depressed. And I don't want to make light of that because that's a very serious issue. But I would immediately put my hands up and say, wait a minute, I'm not qualified to coach you through your depression. And through that, you need to see a therapist. You need to see a psychologist. So it's okay to tell and, and, to, and, to, and to send people away to help them get with somebody more qualified than you in those areas. But as a coach, pick six to 10 areas. And by the way, you don't need to be certified. It's just a sheet of paper, but you need to be qualified. So any mess that you've been through in your life qualifies you to coach and teach that mess. So hopefully that answers your question. I'm going to go to Joanne's question next. You talked about paranormal. Love that stuff. You talked about relationships. Love that stuff. I have a client here in Maui. He's writing a book. I'm sorry that the garbage man is driving by and it's pretty loud out there. I have a guy here in Maui as a client and he's writing a book titled How to Succeed in Your Seventh Marriage. 
Now think about that. How to succeed in your seventh marriage. There's a lot of humor there, right? Like obviously it didn't work for him in his sixth marriage or his fifth marriage or his fourth marriage. So he's taking the bit of relationships and making light of it, making it a humorous subject matter. So what I would say, Joanne, is I wouldn't focus so much on paranormal, but you can do that. I wouldn't focus so much on marriages, but you can do that. I would call yourself a relationship coach. And with relationship coaching, you have drugs, you have alcohol, you have infidelity, you have cheating, you have this, you have that, you have lack of respect, lack of intimacy. There's a hundred different directions as the way that you could go with this. And the reason why you're the most qualified relationship coach on planet earth is you probably have the most stories, the most experiences, right? You probably had more marriages than the rest of us. I've had a practice marriage and now I'm getting ready for a, a real, you know, marriage. When Joanne sounds like you've had a couple practice marriages, so you're better than the rest of us. I'm on seven. You're on seven. So my point of it is that can be what you do. And I tell people all the time, they come to me with a poetry book. They come to me with a children's book and they come to me with a leadership book. And they say, what should I do first? My answer is leadership is the most book speaking topic on planet earth. It's the most monetizable message out there. So write and publish that leadership book and be that leadership coach and consultant. But then write your poetry book for fun. Do the children's book for fun as a hobby. So the paranormal stuff and the spirituality stuff, I love that stuff. But maybe do it for fun and maybe do it as a hobby. But this relationship business, man, you're going to be busy for the rest of your life. 50% of the marriages end in divorce. 80% of second marriages end in divorce. So with 8 billion people on the planet, you have 4 billion people that can work with you. And the other 4 billion, they probably thought about, you know, canceling their marriage at one point or another. So maybe your market is 8 billion people. So that's what I would say is focus on whatever you're most passionate about. I almost made a mistake and had a chapter on technology in my book, Creating Your Own Destiny. And Bettina knows that I kind of struggle a little bit with technology. It's not my most passionate thing. And at the last minute, I said, you know what? I can't stand technology. I love the benefits of it, but I certainly don't want to print it in my book and then every year have to update my book with new technology information. So I deleted it out. And many of you have many passions and many hobbies. What I want you to do is sort through and filter through to find your most marketable passion that soothes your soul. I remember when I started this business, I once got in my car in Bainbridge Island and I freaking drove to Yakima, Washington, which was like a three hour drive plus a ferry boat to give a speech for free to Mary Kay Cosmetics to 200, I'm sorry, probably 50 people at that event. I got done about 10 o'clock, I was starving. I went to Denny's to go eat because I was starving. Got in my car at midnight to drive back to Seattle I missed the ferry boat. So then I had to drive around another hour and a half. I got home at five in the morning. And I had to get up at seven to go to work the next day because it was something that I was passionate about in creating your own destiny. So make certain you have passion. Uh, okay, regarding, I think it was Susan on the art book. Yes, we've done a lot of photography books, a lot of art kind of books. That would be a great coffee table size book. So that's something that we could certainly help you out with. Okay, lastly, I know our time is running out. So I'm gonna answer Nigel's question. About 25 years ago, I spent $3,000 learning three award-winning title formulas. The number one award-winning title formula is the ING rule, where you take a verb, add an ING to it to make it an action verb. And Nigel, you said it. I wrote this down. You said making a difference. That's a spectacular book title. And then you said contributing value. That's a spectacular val uh, uh, title. Using your voice as your moneymaker. That title is going to make you millions of dollars. Using your voice as your moneymaker. So this ING action verb is all about take a verb, add an ING to it to make it an action verb. And by the way, this is so powerful that your entire table of contents should begin this way as well. So instead of a chapter on leadership, it'd be taking the leadership role in your life. Instead of don't give up, it'd be refusing to give up, believing in yourself, balancing family and work. Every one of your chapters should be ING action. 
because nobody wants to be commanded and demanded, create your own destiny. No, they want to go through a process with you as their virtual mentor of creating your own destiny. So use that ING rule. So title should be five words or less that speaks to your head. Subtitle should be 10 words or less that speaks to your heart. And the combination between title and subtitle should be no more than 15 words. And by the way, you can't use the same word in your book twice. And I will tell you this, and I know some of you might disagree with me, but the most copywritten, most marketable word in the English language is you in your, you in your, you in your. So this book is titled Creating Your Own Destiny. Because my book is not my autobiography, it's about them. They don't care if I've created my own destiny. They don't care if I live in Maui. They don't care about me. They want to know if they can quit their job and make it on their own. So then the subtitle is how to get exactly what you want out of life. So you and your, you and your, you and your is the way that you should write to hook in the reader. Because if we don't use you and your, then we're going to teach and preach and teach and preach and teach and preach. Nobody wants to be taught and preached to. When we speak of and write about and use in our copy, you in your, that hooks people in. Because now the affluent entrepreneur is not about Patrick Snow, it's about them. Now, boy, entrepreneur is not about me, it's about them. Creating your own destiny is about them quitting their job, them telling their boss to stick it, them turning their most marketable passion into their own business so they can quit their job in 18 to 24 months and make 100 grand a year as an entrepreneur and never again have to work for the man. That's what it's about. So I love five word or less book titles that begin with an ING rule. I love all of the chapters beginning with an ING. And then I love the words you or your in the title and you or your in the subtitle. And by the way, how to is a great subtitle. How to uh, achieve wealth, how to uh, succeed in marriage, how to have great relationships, how to overcome grief, healing the holes in your soul. It's how about how to heal. So how to is a great subtitle, not a great title. That's the number one award-winning title formula. Second award-winning title formula is the one word or two word formula, like blink or purple cow. The problem with that is you must own the .com of your book title. And if you don't own the .com of your book title, you can't take it to print because then you're going to brand somebody else's website with your book title. So that's why those one word, two word book titles are hard to come by because those domains are usually gone. And then the last title is to take an existing saying or an existing song and change one word. I had a survivor from 9-11 on the 51st floor upon impact when the first plane hit. He descended down 51 flights of stairs and his book title was going to be called Heaven and Heroes. And the problem was he couldn't secure the dot-com Heaven and Heroes. So we took that song, uh, Stairway to Heaven, was that Pink Floyd, I think, that did Stairway to Heaven? And we made his book title, Stairwell to Heaven. So that third formula is take an existing sing or an existing song, change one word. Because his heaven was down below when he escaped the building with only minutes before it collapsed to see his family again. That was his heaven. Meanwhile, the first responders, as they escalated up, they eventually met their heaven. So his book is titled Stairwell to Heaven. That's the third formula. So Bettina, I'm sorry I went about five minutes long. Thank you so much, all of you guys, for joining me today on this. If you want to get more of this every Monday, I host this Inner Circle Q&A call, just the same format. That phone number is 605-475-3200, 605-475-3200. The PIN number, 108-3722-POUND. Again, 108-3722-POUND. And any of you that are interested in a complimentary writing, publishing, book marketing, speaking, coaching, consulting, publicity, branding, anything in this information empire consultation, send me a text with your name and your time zone to my private cell phone number, which is 206-310-1200. Again, 206-310-1200. And I tell you what, people say, I can't believe you give out your private cell phone number. 
But what happens when you give out your private cell phone number, people give you their private credit card number. So there's a reason why you do that. And once you're an author, people think you're a millionaire, billionaire, and untouchable. And that's what we got to do is let people know that we do care, that we do have time, and that we're willing to give a complimentary consultation. And the reason why almost all the coaches on planet Earth, about 80% of them are starving, is they have their coaching certification up on the wall, but they don't make any offers. And remember, nothing happens in business between buyer and seller until an offer is made. And you being the coach, you need to be the one making an offer. And the best kind of offers are using the phrase complimentary. So never say free coaching session. There's no value to free. When you say a complimentary offer, that's a $250 to $500 value. So people will jump all over that. So Bettina, thank you very much. Hope to hear some of you guys on Monday. God bless. I love you all. I'm going to stick around and watch the master, Nigel himself, do his magic. <laughs> Thank you so much. A uh, round of applause here for Patrick. Oh, my goodness. Uh, this was a fantastic session, as always. And, of course, Patrick is one of our recurring speakers for the upcoming We Empower You Global Virtual Summit, which is on December the 8th. That'll be the last one for the year, and I'm looking forward to doubling down next year on the summits and uh, thank you so much for sharing your wisdom, your value with us, uh, your voice as uh, Master Nigel Henry would say, your voice is your money maker. And uh, so you're gonna wanna use your voice to share more about your book coming up. So with that said, I am going to go ahead and introduce our next speaker. And uh, we've already mentioned him here several times in the room, none other than featuring Master Nigel Henry. <laughs> Welcome back, Master Henry. It's great to have you here. So Master Nigel is typically working directly one-on-one -on -one behind the scenes with me, the chief, the ambitious, highly gifted, extraordinary, out-of-the-box individual who has desires or intentions of being known as the number one or the greatest or the disruptor in my industry or profession while making a massive beneficial change into the world. And his specific service for which he is highly compensated is engaging me, his client, in a proprietary form of thinking methodology called activation conversations. This typically results in ex my experiencing sudden massive explosions in my mastery performance and in my capacity for sourcing and contributing insane amounts of value at ludicrous speeds. Master Nigel's Activation Conversations covers the full gamut of my world, including my life's calling, global impact, business performance, health, relationships, and personal lifestyle. So join us now as we welcome Master Nigel Henry to the stage. Thank you so much for joining us again. Thank you. Uh, Angel Bettina, thank you so much. Uh, ah. Okay, it's always like my life gets easy when I follow Patrick, because Patrick models the things that I'm teaching, okay? And um, I actually liked um, Bettina's Q&A thing, because it was interactive, and it, it demonstrated another an attribute of, um, of my topic. So I'm gonna be a little bit more structured today and say my topic is my mission on earth is activating, unleashing the greatness in people. And in around 2013, I had a message from the divine and the message was, Nigel, your message is not deep for everyone. I'm like, what? I'm here to change the world. And the, uh, so, so I said, who is it for? And I heard this message, it's for the change angels. Whew. Now, prior to this change angel word appearing in my vocabulary, I was talking about masters. And I was saying all people are masters and the word master means the original version from which others are replicated. And, you know, I had enough trouble getting that message out to the world. And now I get this new instruction called change angels. So I'm like, no, 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 no. I would prefer to use the word change agent 
because that's easier, more marketable. I'm sure if I was talking to Patrick and asking change angel versus change agent, I suspect he would say Nigel marketable from a market point of view, agent would sell better. So I literally set up a website called Change Agent Mastery and began because I was so excited. And in about a week, I got a cease and desist letter from somebody saying, you are invading whatever copyright, blah, blah, blah. And that's when I said, okay, God, I, I heard you, Change Angels. And so the title that came out is Change Angel Activation. This was 2013. And from that day onwards, I began to research what is an angel, what's a change angel. And what I realized, most of the information was coming back as a download, intuitive awareness. All right. So, and so now since 2014 to this day, that has been my theme and my topic and my mission and my business. And it's, often creates confusion when I speak. And now I realize confusion is mandatory. That's a sign that I'm doing my work. So just to get everyone on the same page, I'd like to invite a Q&A just to find out what questions people have either about Nigel or this change angel thing. So for example, you might notice uh, there's a few people who have the word angel on their Zoom um, identity. Angel of clarity, the angel of freedom, me, the angel of activation, and I, is there any more? So my message is getting through to somebody, <laughs> but I'd love to hear questions from anyone. And I like Patrick's format of just hearing what the audience is curious about. So who would like to go first? with any question about anything regarding change angels, Nigel, all this thing. And then I'm gonna actually give a presentation of my pyramid that actually addresses 90% of all these questions. So Joanne looks like she has a question. No? I have so, a question. I have yes, a question. Please. Yes, yes. What's, what's the difference between an earth angel and a heavenly angel? Great. I'm gonna. Do you, Patrick, and make a note of that question to be addressed. The difference between a heavenly angel and an earth angel. Who else has another question? Because that is a great beginning, by the way. Uh, what about angel of clarity? She's always thinking. <laughs> thinking, by the way, is defined as the process of asking questions. Do you know that? If you're thinking, you're actually processing a question. And the answer is a sign that I've asked the question. And so on a spiritual level, ask and, it, and you shall receive. To the degree that I have received, then therefore I must have asked the question. All right, anybody else? Okay, I know, I yes. I know, my initial thought was, where do I start? Then I realized, well, the question is, who do I start? And I was okay. still working out the words in my Fair head. Enough. So Troy's, touching on questions. So one of the main themes of my work is about questions, which is why I'm starting with who has a question. Um, so let's deal with Patrick's question first. Nigel, what is the difference between an earth angel and a heavenly angel? Now, where's Patrick gone? Because I, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think he knows the answer is what I'm saying. Patrick. So on that question specifically is obviously yes. we know they're located in different areas, but specifically yes. the difference in their ability, their power, their healing. That's what I'm trying to figure out. Our I'm angels, with you, Patrick, but stay yeah, there, man. Don't disappear, though. Stay with us. I, I'm making so lunch, so I got to, I got, as yeah. long as you don't mind me doing that. Well, I'll need your voice. That's the point. It's your voice that I'd like. Um, so I'm going to. Before I get going, I'm gonna share my pyramid because it actually is the framework that answers all these questions. So can I share my screen, Bettina? Oh, yes. Hold on um, one second. There you go. Okay, there we go. Can everyone, has who has not seen this pyramid? Not seen it. All right, so I'm gonna say it again. 
when I examine it, this pyramid represents mindsets, these flourishing mindsets, striving mindset, surviving mindset, dying mindset. And this text over here is the description of the experience that I'm having in the first person and for each mindset. So I see Joanne looking. So what I'd like to do is invite her to just read this one. Can you say it? Can I just read that out loud on upmark? I mean, with your mic on. I'm effortlessly attracting great health, relationships, and wealth opportunities. I am allowing massive beneficial contributions to flow through me. I'm experiencing absolute time freedom and exponential cash flow. I am being a teacher and a role model for others. Very good. First question, Joanne, is this happening in your life right now? Like This is what your life is. This is it. Some of it, yes. <laughs> so which part isn't yet? What about this? Are you effortless? Got the effortless attraction thing going on yet? I think For some, two out of those three. <laughs> Fair enough. What about this? Massive beneficial contributions is coming out through you. Yes. And exponentially, sorry, I'm experiencing absolute time freedom, meaning I don't, my time is absolutely free and my cash flow is doing this no no right and i'm being a teacher and the role model yes very good this description is the description of the change angel this is the angel right here and on earth which is patrick's question what is the difference between a heavenly angel an earth angel. Let's start with the earth angel because one of the things that you know you're on earth is if you have to deal with cash flow and contribution. And one of the reasons why I like following Patrick is because what did you see? The teacher, right? He is created, a, his web modus operandi allows him to um, have this thing going on contribution, depending on the systems that he has, as described by Debbie, he could have this going on. Debbie mentioned this. And, but this is the magic here, attracting health, relationships, and well-being. Well, these are three big topics on earth. And most people have one or just one, but the change angel has them all. So this is the earth angel, Patrick. <laughs> this, is, this is the definition of the earth angel. And so he's questioning, what's a heavenly angel? And anytime you say heavenly, you just mean in the spiritual realm, right? And the spiritual realm is the state of every being before they come to earth. So a common um, expression is, I'm a spiritual being having an earthly experience. Has anyone heard that phrase before? Mm -hmm. So what an earth angel is, is a spiritual heavenly angel having an earthly experience. Literally, like there's, if I was in the heavenly realm, there'd be trillions of angels. You know what their number one desire is while they're up there in spiritual freedom land? is to have an earth experience. It's a privilege to come to earth and to experience the illusion of limitations, illusion. And in order to have limitations in my real earth life, two things are required, blindness and amnesia. That's it. As long as I can't see, I'll be limited. And as long as I keep forgetting, I'll be limited. The name for those two, when you combine blindness and amnesia, is called unconscious. You're going unconscious, Nigel. Uh, have you noticed when you go unconscious, you can't remember what happened and everything is dark. 
So it turns out that the mind can be infected with what I call the virus. So it has degrees of unconsciousness. So back to uh, Joanne, everything below this line, Joanne, is a degree of unconsciousness, everything. And as my unconsciousness increases, which means I'm going down and more earthly, right? The density of my mind is getting thicker and I'm getting more blind and less aware, literally. And it has cash flow implications. The clear mind, as, instru- as it rec- uh, represented by the angel of clarity herself, Angel Debbie, have you noticed? When she speaks, she's already in this mode. Angel Debbie, she literally came on the call and said and summarized everybody's talk in one go and talked about the cash flow machine that Lee's teaching us and Nigel's teaching, the moneymaker, and and um, Patrick's teaching in one go. This lady's just summarized it. And what is her name? The angel of clarity. What is clarity? This means your mind is 90 something percent virus free and you're approximating the heavenly angel to address Patrick's question. An heavenly angel is an unlimited being with superpowers that's so badass that they're, they're next, they are God. But as soon as to be on earth is to embrace limitation. You have to take it on. It's called becoming flesh. And to be human is to reduce yourself to limitation. And then there's options. How far do you go? How far down do you want to go? So my tribe, the change angels, are the angels, the spiritual angels who when got their embodiment, they came out of the womb, they said, you know, I have a limit on how unconscious I'm going to be. I refuse to downgrade past a certain level. And therefore, I'll maintain high levels of awareness from childhood onwards. Now, as soon as you do that, you stop being normal. What does normal mean? Join in and agree to limitation. So I know this doesn't apply to um, Angel Joanne. Well, could you like to read what it sounds like to be normal, this thing? Just read that and see if you like it, by the way. You want me to read it? Yeah. Okay. Surviving. I am not dead yet, still struggling, treading water, spending my time trying to maintain my health, relationships, and cash flow that I can stay alive. Sounds awful. That, doesn't it sound familiar, though? In my past, I, I'm not struggling. Oh, I meant in the world. Oh, in the world. Yes, it sounds familiar in the world. This, the look time. at this percentage here. This yeah. is called mm-hmm. the masses. Right. And it's like when I speak to this crowd, it's like things are just bouncing off. <laughs> I'm wasting my time, honestly. Because they're like, Nigel, you're not in the real world. I'm like, no, I live up here, dude. Right. I'm right next to heaven. Dude, well, how, how are you going to make any money? This is where the money's at. Uh, my people are not into the getting game anymore. These people are trying to get a solution. How to is their favorite thing. They're looking for an answer to get out of survival. This is why Patrick is right in the survival normal this is the marketplace here where people consume information but notice patrick who represents one of my peoples he was not consuming information he was contributing information the number one difference between an angel a change angel and the rest of the planet is the change angels modus operandi is output the rest of the planet is about getting value the angel is about giving value. They really don't care about getting anything at all because they're so close to the source that they are a channel for value. They're like one-way traffic. They're like the sunshine. Their light is on all the time. Nigel, do you ever switch off? No. 
<laughs> can you be normal? No. Um, can you just turn it down a bit? No. That's going to be a problem. Yes, I am a troublemaker. I'm a disruptor. I don't fit into any box. That sounds like limitation. There will be an explosion up in here, right? That's my people. They're disruptors. They're troublemakers. They don't think in any form of linear fashion. This linear, this linear, or this linear doesn't work for my peeps. My peeps like exponential. They like this thing. This is ultimate freedom here where their time has got nothing to do with their income. Money just takes off by itself. Okay, Whew. is this making any sense, uh, Angel Joanne? Because you're my little model for the audience here. So, but I know it's difficult because you're one of us. It feels like you're one of my peeps. Talk to me. Talk it's to making me. it's making sense, um, right. and it's interesting because you know I will talk to other people I know, clients or whatever, who are struggling, and I tend to think in terms of you know manifestation and attracting what you want. This and moment. they can't they can't think that way because there's so much survival mode. So this is another mind, um, but uh, but you know, see, they're all the same now. All these angels <laughs> are the same. <laughs> Joanne, Troy, they're all the same, right? The, this is this mind here is called the Christ mind for anyone else who wants to know it, and it's so badass up here in this mindset that we can create new paradigms. Just like you know what, two plus two is four. No. Let's make it three now. As of today, two plus two is three. It's a new paradigm and a new math starts because our mind is free to do that. The only issue is getting agreement with these guys. And then, no, two plus two is always four. Uh, depends on which mindset you're using. So my people live in this mindset where we get to re recreate new realities in our minds and then make it real. Here's a guy that sounds familiar, like one of my pips, uh, Elon Musk, totally crazy. Absolutely out of his mind, actually, normal mind. Let's get that straight. He is in a whole different mindset. So here's some words now. So Nigel uses a whole, this world here has a totally separate set of vocabulary. Since mind runs on words, these words here are like, you know, well, it's not possible, Nigel. I don't believe you and I can't do that. And that's how they talk, right? Which is fine. And it's normal, sorry, it's normal. And so for my people to actually say, Joanne, you're so normal, is an insult. It's like, you know, <laughs> I said, Joanne, you're normal. You know what I'd say to you? Go and wash your brains. How Nobody get... calls me normal anymore. <laughs> uh, do you want to be normal? No. <laughs> so if you're normal and you come to my work, I say, Joanne, I'm going to brainwash you. Your mind is dirty. I got to give you a cleanse. This is some serious scrubbing. So that's the first thing that happens when people join any of my programs. FMC is the one that I have agreement with for this, uh, for anyone watching. The FMC is the entry. When you come through Reading Power, this is your gate into the land of change angels. And the first thing we do is we instantly put the angel in this conditioning. And we say, listen, I don't care where you came from, where you've been hanging out, you're going to work a miracle in five days. I'm like, what? No, we don't do that question. Right? So. The reason why I started with question is to hear the questions that people ask. But before I, and I'm addressing it, but I'd like to share a secret that is shared in the FMC, but I'm going to share it now. And I, Joanne, do you mind still being my sample angel? Oh. All right, Joanne, each of these mindsets are created by habitual questions, interestingly enough. This mindset is created by a question. This one's created by a question. This is created by a question. They're all separate. And the questions are different. So what I'd like to see is 
the way your mind works. Uh-oh. Can use your, well, actually, I don't want you to use any of these minds. I'd like you to use this one. This is also known as the intuitive mind. It's connected directly to source. Right. Therefore, it has unlimited access to the internet, uh, spiritual internet. Yeah? So I will ask you questions. I expect you to know because your mind belongs here. Now here, you got to do hard knowledge. If someone didn't put it in there, you say, well, I don't know. I don't know. No one's ever taught me that. Ah. My people don't get taught, they download, they channel. Okay, so using your intuition, meaning the first answer that pops into your head, which type of question creates the dying mode? This, just first, no thinking. Any question that pops, it's okay, I would like you to get it wrong. If you're trying to give, give me the wrong answer. Which type of question Just yeah, is the just, dying? Yes, just pop up. Anything that pops up in your mind, just say. Now you're thinking, aren't you? You're right. I'm sorry. <laughs> See? She's a deep thinker. Angel, definitely. So the first answer that popped up was anything. It just doesn't, in that doesn't mean nothing. Am I a failure? Very good. Great wrong answer. All right. Now <laughs> let's open this up. And see who, okay, there's the angel of clarity. Which question pops up to your mind, um, angel? Why? Debbie? Why? Now, great. It is the why. Debbie, have you seen this before? No. Great. Well, Debbie is absolutely right because she's connected to the spiritual internet. Debbie, are you connected to the spiritual internet or am I just projecting? Oh, no, definitely. She Definitely. is, right? So the answer that comes instantly to my people, they don't have to look it up. No Wikipedia required. They channel the answer. Why? So people who are in this mindset, their favorite habitual type of question is why? Why is this happening to me? Why can't I get any better? Why am I on my fourth husband? Why this? Why, why, why? And that mindset generates this cash flow here. You know what we call them? Loser, victim. You know, it's just a matter of time before they pass out. All right. Now, I am saying that, but these people are, are asking the question without awareness that they're asking it. And they think, Nigel, I just want to know why. Why I can't get my book sold? Why can't I finish what I'm doing? Why can't? And they always ask a why with a limiting statement afterwards. Have you? bumped into any of those angel joanne yeah where well, they're just like asking you these yes. questions about their limitations yeah. and then when they answer it they use the most deadly virus word in the list of virus words not because no this one because oh because they're like why can't you you know because and then sometimes they don't even ask the question they just start explaining themselves so sorry I'm late because the traffic, because I'm like, oh, please stop explaining yourself. It's putting your mind in this traffic mode here. And they think they need to explain everything. And the systems in the world support it. Example, the other day, well, not the other day, I subsequently moved on to T-Mobile, but I used to be with AT&T. And I was having problems, man. And so I called the help desk and I'm like, hello, um, Mr. Henry, how can we help you? Well, my, you know, my, my line isn't working, blah, blah, blah. Hold on, let me find out why. I, I don't know, I wanna know why. <laughs> I want the line to work. And then, oh yeah, we found out why, Mr. Henry. And the reason is because I'm like, ah, please. I didn't call up to find out why, but they think I want that food. You see that? The, the world is geared to feed the people and keep them there. Watch the news. So-and-so is happening, da 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 After the break, come back and we'll find out why. Have you heard that? See how popular that question is? It's deadly, man, for my peoples. All right, so we ban it in, in my sessions. That question is banned. Don't want to know why, don't explain it to me, please. Now, who would like, well, let me just stay with Joanne because I'm reactivating your flourishing mind, Joanne. Just straight up, first question that pops up in your mind for surviving. Um, um, Great. 
Great, great, great. See, it just popped up, right? Now, this is why I asked um, uh, Angel Patrick about the title. What I noticed is that it's the most popular personal development title on earth. How mm -hmm. to Win Friends and Thing, and it's a bestseller. And as a author, I, I, I have to remember that Patrick's job is to help us to sell our books and the consumers of books is this market. How to do your seventh husband, right? It makes sense because that's their question that they're asking. And what I'm saying, Joanne, is that the reason why they're asking, the, the, the reason why they're in this mindset is because they're asking that question all the time. The question is the determinant of the mindset. And as long as I like being in survival, then the how question is absolutely wonderful. That's the, the basis of the YouTube search engine. People go on the YouTube to find out how to do stuff. And so YouTube is making a killing serving the mass market right here, you see? So Nigel's not against words. I'm just saying the questions and the words create the mindset and the mindset creates the cash flow. So the masses on earth are on a fixed income. Their money does not change with time. It's the same last year and it's gonna be the same next year. And it's a way of thinking. And what I've also found out, it rarely goes over 100 in anything they do. 100 is the actual limit. So what's your income? Well, I'm on uh, 60,000, man. Okay, well, what's next? Well, I'll probably get a pay rise to 80,000. Okay, dude, and then, well, you know, I might get to six figures. And 120,000 is like over the moon. And in fact, they don't get 100K. They get 89 plus benefit, blah, 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 blah. The number, and that's why if you notice, if you put your price over $100, you lose these guys. So they like mm -hmm. these 50 bucks an hour stuff and all this. And so high ticket is out of the question for these people, right? But if you want low ticket and high volume, this is your market right here. Yes? So this is the masses. Nigel's message rarely ever connects here. And when I started out, I was strictly talking to these people because that's the environment I was living in and helping my peoples. And the majority of them are in survival and nobody paid me anything, but they want free. So I burnt up a lot of time and energy and got nowhere. Look at this. That was my cash flow forever. Then one day, Somebody said, Nigel, you need to go and speak at the Chamber of Commerce. Stop speaking at the Rotary. Stop speaking at your church and go to where people value money called the, cha the, the Chamber of Commerce. So I did a tour of the Bay Area Chamber of Commerce. And that's where my life took off. And you know what I was presenting? This pyramid. And I said, just, I raise my hand, this pyramid, raise your hand if your business is doing this, this, or this, right? If people in business are doing this, this is bad news for a business person. It just means business and survival. The stock market wants to see this. Every business is growing if it's doing this. So now, Joanne, can you guess which question generates this mindset? Who? Wrong answer. Have another guess. This one. I said who? I know. I know. Oh, okay. Sorry. Wrong, wrong answer. Next. Question. A wrong answer. Then That's I would say wrong. when. <laughs> wrong answer. All right. Keep going. I want wrong answers. Wrong answers is the intuition that, warming up. Who? What? Good. Oh, we don't want how. Oh, well, what? We haven't used what yet. So now you notice that what you're doing is reasoning it out. You're right. Now, when I ask Angel of Clarity, she pings it out. It's just <laughs> ping. And she says it with such authority, like, oh, she must know what she's talking about. <laughs> right? But she just channeled it and adds certainty to her intuition. She doesn't mince her intuition. But when you're reasoning out, is that right, Nigel? 
you are back here, semi here, like asking for approval from an earthly being. The angel's boss is G-O-D. And that's the authority that they speak from. Not the book that they read, not Wikipedia, YouTube. So what's your intuition telling you again? Which one? Go on. Um, no just... reasoning. Stop reasoning. Stop. <laughs> You're too reasonable, woman. You need to be unreasonable. <laughs> Bookkeeper. Um... Aha. Pick one. Pick the wrong one. I picked three wrong ones already. Well, pick it again. This is just pretend you've never said anything before. And like the, the one that my intuition is saying is this one. Just close your eyes and pick something. <sighs> yeah, just that one. Whatever it is. Don't think. No thinking. Okay, let me explain to my peeps why is she taking so long? There yeah, is a conditioning that happened when angels spend too long here, and it's called judgment. Wrong and right. They don't like giving the wrong answer because in this world, you get punished for the wrong answer. In this world, the wrong answer is the right answer. The right answer is what everyone agrees with. And so you're like, if I say what I'm feeling, the intuitive one, they're going to think I'm crazy. Plus, I'm going to get bing, punished for getting it wrong. And I'm going to be laughed at. So let me think this through and make sure. And now you're using the mind in heavy duty processor mode. That's not what it's for. The mind was not sent here to process anything. Its simple job is to add language and spit stuff out. You see that? So you're working your mind too hard now. So let me ask you while you're here, where are you on this pyramid? Are you here business wise? Here, here. I, I'm, not, I'm not even going to give this option. So are you here, here, or here, cash flow wise in your business? Because the business people get this much better. It's like, oh, you're a bookkeeper. You can see the graph. Go ahead. Just be honest. Um, I'm, at, I'm at least in striving for business. Okay, business high, high, high well. yes, high or low? High striving. Very good. Yeah. Now, pick the question, please. <sighs> the wrong one. Okay, you have options, just pick one. Like close your eyes or whichever your finger stops on, that's the wrong answer. <laughs> See, that's too much thinking. I know, I'm So sorry. just say the wrong answer, like, here we go. Okay, let me, Troy, just list some questions. That like, would be good. And then let her, tell her to pick one. Just, uh, why, like, how, what, who, Pick one. Pick any of those. Just pick anyone. I did. You didn't like no. that. No, I think I, yeah. You said it right no. once, Joanne. No, no, no. Wait, wait, wait. Don't tell her. The she who? Said, she said Nigel didn't like it. Who oh. the hell is Nigel? <laughs> Nigel's a judge. Awesome. You see? That's my point. She's worried about other people's opinion. And I'm saying, give me the wrong answer. Notice everyone's heard you. Like, just pick one of the ones that Troy, I don't I, care if it's wrong. My inclination was who the first time around. And right did Nigel say it's wrong? You see? <laughs> 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 the wrong thing is hurting you. Okay, yeah. now let me just, who has not spoken? I know that Angel of Clarity knows the answer. So I'd like someone else. That's why I'm skipping her. Uh, who else has not spoken? What about Patrick? Is Patrick still there? Is anyone still there? Come on now. Is it just now, give me another wrong. Oh, there he is. Courtney, where are you at, man? Give me the wrong answer, please. Hello, how are you doing? Courtney, hey. the question. Yes. The, a question that starts with WH. <laughs> a question that starts with WH. You got um, one second to give me a wrong answer. <laughs> um, a question that starts with WH. Uh, who? Wrong me. answer. Next. No. Now, next. Great. Next. All right. I'm Now, do you realize you've given me the correct answer already, Joanne? 
I did? Good. Yes. But tell me which one it was. Use your intuition. Which one do you think was the correct answer you gave me using yeah. your intuition? When? Wrong answer. Have another guess. Yay! Yeah. Hallelujah. Well, hold. Repeat. Come on, Joanne. Repeat it. I said what? 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 Yes, Joanne. How do you feel now that you stumbled? I feel great. That? <laughs> yes. Now, why would you not allow yourself to get to that answer quicker? I thought I had used that before, so. So you can still get it. You did. You did. And I said it was right, but you didn't hear it. Ah. Uh, because you. you were busy trying not to get it wrong. And Nigel was specifically saying, give me the wrong answer. Give me the wrong answer. Give me I've the always wrong been an A student, so, you know, I have Thank to. Thank you. <laughs> this is where I'd like to go to. She has come from the land of students yeah. where somebody else gives the approval for your answer. And I'm playing that role right now. Uh, wrong. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so my angel friends are independent authorities. They get their answer is the answer. I love that. They're independent authorities. They say two plus two is one, and that becomes the new paradigm on earth because the angels said so. They don't ask for approval. They are the approval. Hello, Joanne, you're thinking. I can see you thinking. No, I'm, I'm, I, I know I like that because, I mean, that's kind of, that's not kind of, that is how I'm thinking. I know. Lately. And yes, Joanne, you're returning I'm back to I'm not waiting place. for the man to give me permission or approval. It's like, this is how I am now. And, and this, this is how it is now. Yes. <laughs> so that means you're returning to your right mind, Joanne. Yes. Because below this line, you got to get approval uh -huh. and agreement. Yes. And the angel does not get agreement or approval. They are the authority and you join them. You're going to come around to it one way or the other, as long as they don't die, and they do die, or they outlive you, you're going to come around to the angel's point of view. Super. Well, back. Welcome back. You see? Thank you. Now, the one that you struggled on was here, right? Right. And it's a what? Can you create a what question? Any question. Just make up a question that starts with what? Regarding husbands. Regarding husband, your topic, your husband's. Oh, God. <laughs> Any uh, question starts with what? There you go. No, I'm sorry. Uh, well, what would make him happy? Ooh, that's a terrible question. <laughs> what, is his, what is his love language? All right. What about Angel Clarity? Any what questions? I saw you, Angel Clarity. I saw your reaction to that question. <laughs> well, I, you're a relationship coach, right? I guess and I am now. <laughs> well, and are you teaching your clients to ask themselves what would make him happy or what is his love language? Is that what you're I, teaching? I haven't done any of that yet. I just came well, out. you with... are. You're doing it now. You're so right. you're also... I'm she's practicing. Give her, uh, she's forgiven on my world because my <laughs> intention is to show the angel at work before they are activated. Absolutely. And I mean, I can see the brilliance in you and it's, it's where you gravitate. And, you know, you, you, Nigel's 100% right because you have all the intuition. You have all of the divine right. connection. connection. Right? Yeah. And it's just letting go. Well, um, so I'm just but, asking, well, sorry, you asked me to ask a question, so. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I see what you're doing. And I, I, you're, you're doing what an angel does, which is <laughs> you're, te you're teaching her on the spot. And I'm, I'm avoiding that today because I want her to feel the pain of not being in her right mind. <laughs> <laughs> does that make sense? Like, it does. I would like her to know and feel that pain like she knows this is how her brain really works. When I, that was the first, you said, that's me, Nigel. But then when I test you on earth, you're having major mindset issues going on. Right. And I, I can see, I know what your cash flow is going to be. 
But either way, you're here. This is the world right here. And this, just read this piece. Just read this. Go ahead. The striving. I am working hard and using my limited time to increase my health relationships, contributions, and cash flow. Any word sticks out in that statement. Just jumped out at you. Working. Working. That's <laughs> what I saw you doing when just to pick a question. This lady is working hard. And you know, your mind hates it. I'm telling you right now, your mind is having a, you're going to have a meltdown or a midlife crisis or something because your mind was not designed for working. It was designed for channeling. Oh, thank you. It was designed to be like Debbie's mind, where it's just so clear, things just pop out of her mouth. Easy, like easy. That's your mind's thing. You're supposed to be here, but thank you're here. This is what I see. And your mind is having a rebellion. It doesn't mean it hates the question, what? Nigel, I hate it. Don't let me come up with the thing because she's bought me in the what mode and I hate it here. Get me out of here. Her mind is saying, if I could, I'm for the mind. I think the mind is being royally abused on earth, um, Angel Joanne. The mind was come into the world innocent. That innocent mind got programmed with bull, uh, not very nice things, okay? And now the mind is suffering and it belongs to an angel. You feel what I'm saying? So this is a what thing. The people that make the decisions and leadership, this is what um, um, Patrick was saying, the, one of the most popular topic and money maker above the how-to is leadership books. Why? Because these guys control these guys. And what happens in the what mode, it creates this linear increase. And the more you know, the more money you make. And it's what you know. And so you become, an, it's called an expert. And you got to get it right. You can't be an expert and get it wrong because you saw what uh, Debbie was going to do to you. Really? What? What kind of question is that? What does he like? What, kind, what lady, you're going to be shut down because you're in this space, leadership. You're exposed to the bullets but you get paid by the hour and by how much you know, what you know is not, you don't have to do the how to, you just have to talk the wisdom and write a book and talk, you get paid here for what you know. But then you go, but you got to study to put the knowledge in. And I say, my people do not do that. We don't belong here, here or here. My people are weird. So Nigel, where do you get the knowledge from? Oh, direct connect. We download, we channel. You know, go ahead. Yes. I was going to say, it's interesting. And thank you for, uh, it's, is it Debbie? Yes. Okay, Angel good. Of clarity. Um, yes. Thank you for what you said, because I, I'm coming from a lot of this from what never worked for me mm -hmm. and what I want to, you know, it's like what I would like to see and what I know, what I think or what I believe would make a happier marriage. But also, I do, you know, I take, I walk in my neighborhood and lately I'm getting a lot of information just while I'm walking around, you know, the inspiration comes Yes. and, you know, it's like, I had a not so great podcast interview the other day. It's like, she wanted to hear what I'd learned from my marriages, but uh. then she, I know, but then she goes, okay, well, my audience is 20 to 30 somethings who are happily married. It's like, well, you never told me that. <laughs> <laughs> but then I, I took my walk and I go, oh, well, here's a list of things I could have shared. You know, so it's well, like, it's interesting. It's, the process here's is the thing. You were in a trap situation, um, Angel Joe, because when you go on a podcast or any kind of interview, right. they're interviewing experts. Right. You're called an expert. And you know what an expert, someone who knows what's happening. What's the problem? What, and then not, if you watch these interview questions, 99% of them start with not, what? Hmm. So what would you say is the biggest problem that occurs in relationships? What, what went wrong in your first marriage? What, 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 what? Right? It's just, it's popular. It's big money. Let's not, <laughs> let's, like to honor Patrick, Patrick will tell you to write a book on that because you will make money. Let's get it clear. <laughs> Let's be, let me be clear. So, <laughs> my President Obama, let me be clear. This is money, this is money, but this is knowledge money. 
and it's leadership money. That's what Patrick is saying, write a leadership mm -hmm. book. Yes, and don't, I mean, I'm, you hear I'm working with Patrick and I'm actually saying my people transcend that. So this is why I find a lot of my, my tribe are caught up in the personal development industry and they just don't quite fit. Even though they're writing their book, they're doing the coaching and the da 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 because of this little trap right here. What do I teach, Nigel? What, what's the best topic? You hear all these what questions? What, 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 what? Now, this is interesting, Joanne. Look at this. So, Joanne, now, now that you're aware that you're not supposed to be thinking at all, because oh, you're not supposed to be thinking at all, you said it. I went for a walk and the answers came to me. Inspire, right. meaning in spirit. The spirit came into my mind and informed, informed me. And I, I didn't read any books. I was just walking in nature. That's your modus operandi. Yes. Anything else is work. And yes. you, know, you hate it. You hate it. Okay, stop it. Stop it. <laughs> now, back to the matter at hand. Interestingly enough, every time I asked you for this question, you gave me this question. Can you now intuit? This question. Get it wrong first. Who? Oh. Correct. Hallelujah. Can I get a wait a minute? This is the only question an angel is supposed to ask ever. And that's the question you kept on giving me. When I said this, you were like, this an angel, the uh, only thing that comes to my mind is who? You were in your right mind in the first place. And this, I'm so sorry to put you through hell to get the wrong answer in the first place. You don't belong here, Angel Joy. Thank you. you go back home, girl. Go back to where you come from. Go back to your own country, as they say in England. Go back to your country. You belong here. Come back home. You're a who girl. Your questions are who. So, Les, can you make up a who question now regarding your topic, the husband scenario? We're just Imagine you're on a podcast and they're like, so um, Joanne, we, we have lots of questions for you. So what, what, what made you write your book? Joanne, convert it to a who. Just make up a who question. A, a question? Um, convert hmm. all questions to who. All Go. right. Why did I write my book? Wrong question. No, you no, I know. <laughs> I know. Don't think too hard. I can see you want to think. Just instantly put a who in front of it oh. and go. Yeah, there you go. Who, who, who said I should write my own story? Thank who, you. Who inspired you to write? Who it? inspired me, right? Yeah, and that's a story right there. You can go off in an interview on the who. You know, I was listening to the great author, uh, what's his name, Patrick, Patrick, Patrick Snow. And he was talking about this guy that had seven wives or whatever. And I'm like, I'm seven husband. Yeah. And, I and he that was... Guy. <laughs> who is he i said to myself you see me too and the next question is who could connect me with him and the whole narrative was about the who 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 that's where angels live so now let me do my little commercial for the financial miracle challenge bettina is my number one um model and testimonial for the yeah. um fmc and in the last one we did in September, Troy was there. We introduced the double who. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Are you thinking again? <laughs> no, not at all. Well, who comes to mind? So what we found out is if you'd like exponential money, and Debbie spoke to it, Debbie stopped figuring out what to do. And I'm sure she said, well, who can do this? Which is when she referred to the referral thing. She just talks because of who she is. I'm the angel of clarity. Who that is? I'm the angel of clarity. Who? Angel of clarity. And what does that, what do you do? No, it's not what I do, it's who I am. Oh, okay. You see, the world cannot think in who mode. They have to think in what mode or how mode. How does that work, Debbie? Debbie just deflects, well, because of who I am, I channel. 
because of the angel of clarity, light comes around when I show up. But how, how does that work? It's not a how thing. It's a who thing. So to avoid, to help them to get me out of trouble when they keep on locking down, trying to lock me into a who quest, I give a distinction. Uh, Mr. Interviewer, let, may I give you a distinction? Yes. Identity activates superpowers. Just repeat that several times. Identity activates superpowers. Oh, so who I am determines what comes out of me. You see that? It's deep. And that will keep them busy for a long time. Just one little statement like that. They're called banknotes. We create them in, in the FMC. We just make some saying and then take it to the bank and cash out. <laughs> okay? That's what your downloads were. Wisdom in a soundbite. That makes your titles for your book. That means you don't have to talk long in your, um, on your thing. You just say a couple of words. And they're like, whoa, that was deep. Oh my God, I need to ponder that. And they'll just be away for a couple of hours. <laughs> and you can do the derby, chill out. Or download another one, okay? So your and the who question causes the mind to stay in flourishing mode. Here's a question for you, Joanne. Who do you think you are? Joanne, who do you think you are, woman? An angel. Thank you. Enough said. You know, as soon as you say angel, everybody's brain goes off to where Patrick's mind was. You know, are you heavenly or earthly? And an earthly is an heavenly in body. So think of all the heavenly qualities that you can think of and then bring it to earth. That's what it is. There is no difference. One of them is just in body. I'm here. I'm not in the sky. I'm here. And automatically I'm a blessing to you because whatever you think of an angel in the sky is, here I am right here in the flesh. Any other questions? Well, who sent you? Oh, uh, who do you think? You see, you don't even have to answer questions because if you say who, who, whose authority, who gives you this authority, Nigel, to talk like you're, you're, you're God? Uh, who do you think? Oh, so angels work directly for the boss and therefore they are pre-authorized to disrupt. <laughs> Sorry, I'm going off here. You see what I'm saying? It's just pre. So let me check in with Cor Courtney because he does be sitting there like, this is interesting, but it's not relevant to me. Courtney, who are you? I'm Courtney Gray. Sorry, Courtney, what's your name? Courtney. Uh, Sorry, what's your second name? Courtney Gray, right? So you notice, Courtney Courtney, Gray. I asked him a who question and he gave me a who. Oh, oh, wait, wait, uh, he gave me a what answer. His brain is programmed okay. never to go back to base. So, sorry, who are you again? I'm a, uh, a radio announcer. What do you do for a living, Courtney? Well, I'm not doing anything right now. What would you like to do for a living with that magnificent voice? Well, maybe get into radio announcing. And, uh, you know, this about what I'm doing there, uh, Angel Clarity. I'm literally listening to his answer and then reverse engineering the question. He's a what guy? He, he doesn't hear the who question and he doesn't know how to answer it. This is why this number exists. You guys see this number? 1%. This is what in that 1% that's on earth that's making all the millions and millions, they're called the who's. And in England, where this stuff started, there's a book called The Book of Who's Who. Did you know that? It's literally a book. And if your name is not in it, you ain't nobody. And you've got to have a title to get in it. Are you with me, my peoples? <laughs> so it's a who thing. And so my tribe are the who. They're born that way. There's nothing you can do about it, but you can try and program them by making them a student, Joanne, and you get brainwashed to thinking that you get rewarded for being smart. No, you, your reward comes from channeling. That's why you're a woo-woo person, okay? 
I'm Mark. a what? I'm sorry. I'm a who? Did you say you're a what? <laughs> I'm a who? A woo woo. A woo woo, yes. You know what woo woo is? People that talk out, out there. Yes. <laughs> We're in the spiritual realm. Or nerds. I'm a nerd, man. I'm a certified nerd. But guess what? The nerds rule the world. So let me summarize this. The mindsets are created by habitual questions. When a baby comes out the womb, I think that baby's first question is, who is that? Who that is? Oh, that's mama. And the first word the baby learns, I think, is mama. And if the answer is mama, the question was, who that is? Who got the food? Who brought me here? Who do I turn to when I'm in trouble? Who cares about me? Who? The baby's mind is a who. And then to get the what and the how, you have to go to school and get brainwashed. I mean, brain programmed, indoctrinated. And that's when the descending happens. And then depending on which school you went to, giant. If you went to the peasant school, they teach you this. And they ask you, why are you late? Why this? Why, why, why you have to explain yourself to everybody? If you go to the working class school, they say, how do you do that? How are you going to lay some bricks? How hard are you going to work? How is this going to get done doing so you get paid for your labor, which is a how to do stuff? Mm -hmm. And if you go to a um, leadership school, they teach you to read books and to know what, what was the Battle of Hastings, what, what does this mean? And you have to read a lot to have data in your brain. But if you don't go to any of these schools, you live in nature and download stuff and they call you a weirdo. Oh, and a weirdo is a derivative of the word wizard. And a wizard is derived from the word wise one. And a wise one is someone who channels wisdom, angel of clarity. And back in the day, they were called the prophets and the man of God and all these people that wrote the Bible. Guess who my tribe is? Returning wise ones. Welcome back. Angel Joanne. So, mm -hmm. and my mission is to locate, assemble, and activate my tribe of change angels. Because when they are gathered, when two of them are in the same spot and they agree on something, the big thing becomes law on the spot. Where two or more, two or more are gathered and agree on something. When two angels agree, it's a done deal. The question, the problem is they're so rare, they're very rare, okay, rare, and they're usually miss, um, they cannot be easily, they can't find a match, Angel Joanne, hence the number, okay? <laughs> <laughs> they're not easily matched, but they want to be, but they yeah. cannot be. So it's because they're hanging out in the wrong places. So Joanne, I don't know what your next number is, but the question is, are you an angel? I am an angel. No, not your question. Oh. Oh. The partner, the future partner, because seven is a magic number. Seven is a magic number? Uh-huh, completely. I'm already on seven. <laughs> I know. You got to make sure this person is an angel. Huh. Well, I'm sure he would think, say he is. <laughs> well, he probably is. If you asked him, it's... Who are you, dude? Can you please tell the truth? Because who I am is an angel and assume that we are compatible. It must be like attracting like. And returning back to the mountaintop here. So anyway, I think that's, I hope, let me just check by asking the master teachers in the house to just summarize so that I can get out of here. Oh, there she is. Angel, uh, ooh, the angel of connection will now summarize the teachings. And, Take it home. <laughs> Take it home. I'll go ahead and stop your share there. Yes. Yes. Ooh. Wow. All I got to yeah. say is I'm drinking the Kool-Aid here, Nigel. <laughs> every time you are on with us and every time I've participated in the FMC, the Financial Miracle Challenge, and every time I've been through the Virus Awareness mastery program that you have the vamp as you call it i i just like grow 
just, it's like I expand and I am able to see the distinctions that you're sharing with us by the participation of the willing angels like Joanne and Angel Clarity and Angel Troy who left us and Courtney and others who have been through this journey with you, which is, it's a, it's a challenge. It's a challenge. It's courageous. Yes. Courage. Courage. It, it defies logic and um, I'm just getting deeper and deeper in uh, intentionality around my voice being my moneymaker, my intention to live in the flourishing zone always. Yes. These are, these are the things that why we have, why I have Nigel on this stage. So thank you so much. Round of applause for Master Nigel Henry. Woo-hoo. May I say something, Nigel? Yeah, I was going to say that. I wanted to hear with Angel of Charity how she would summarize. Go ahead. Yeah, she beat thinking that. So what's really interesting is the fact that Nigel is here now sharing this message now, because right now in the world, we are absolutely being um, encouraged on an unconscious level <clears throat> to, to not essentially channel <laughs> to be, and let me explain exactly what I mean. in in, in two sentences, Oh, I know what you mean. We are being oh, absolutely okay. taught that knowledge only yes. comes from authority. What is, what is so contrary and foreign in this conversation is that actually authority comes from knowledge and the knowledge comes from being open and connected to source. But you now are, so this is that question um, to, sorry, who Nigel was talking to. Joanne. Uh, Joanne. Jo- it's like, you know, this is the thing is that we're so, it's gotta be like, you'll be on a show and it's like immediately, okay, okay, yeah, but tell us the top three things we can do right now to do X, Y, Z, you know, and that's what we're, that's what we're not here to do. Right. Now, thank you for that. And if I was to take it and polish it up even more, we live in an information matrix now there are things called data uh what do they call it data economy the cloud is a massive database of knowledge which means that you can get data all day. from that thing out there and the authorities now call google right And because it's not even new data, it's just accumulated historical data. It's not fresh data. An angel pulls in fresh living data from source. And to the extent that angels stop, um, we don't have enough activated angels, let's put it like that, then the world is gonna regurgitate the history of what the world has been, right? It's just going to regurgitate. So the purpose of activation of the angels is so that we have new channels bringing the new heaven and the new earth, the new, the next generation of new paradigms. That's who we are. And to the extent that we have gone offline and participate in the world data, we're super spreaders. So I agree with 100% with what Angel Clarity is saying. Is the world... Facebook, social media is telling you to come to us. We are the authority. You've got to know this. Wikipedia is the knowledge. No, we, Joanne, model it. She's like, no, I need to go for a walk right now and turn off my devices so that nature can inform me from the spirit. My number one antenna is a tree. I love trees. They download stuff to me, right? If there's no green, my antenna starts going crazy. Okay, uh, well, yes. Thank you, Joanne. Uh, who else did not summarize? Um, 
Courtney, can you say anything from what you observed or felt before you go? And Bettina really nailed it. Um, and I'll speak a little bit about what she said. Uh, Courtney? Uh, yes. Well, let's see. Um, something went over I reserved. Uh, sorry, I couldn't. I didn't understand the question exactly, but you asked me. Uh, the clues that, sorry about that. Um, let's see. Uh, it, it was quite interesting. Um, quite interesting that um, that uh, getting getting into uh, what is it? Um, oh gosh. My mind is right off track right now. Um, <laughs> um, getting into uh, who people are, uh, who people, who people really are, how, um, yeah. Yeah. Um, oh gosh, I don't even know how to answer. Now, Sorry about that. Um, I, I'm just going to own that. This remember at the beginning I said Nigel creates confusion. Mm -hmm. I said that, that's a sign that my, I am doing work. So what confusion means is, is when the mind is shifting from one, one mindset to another, that period of transition is called confusion. And you just lose vocabulary, like, well, not, uh, uh, <laughs> uh. and two things are going to happen. Either you're going to go back to safety, comfort, or if you come into FMC or any of Nigel's programs, we turn up the heat so that you keep moving. And next thing you know, Nigel, oh my God, you just have a new thought. Uh, or you get Nigel all of a sudden, suddenly something clicks. And the more vertical I go up that pyramid is the quicker it clicks. That's what's going on with Bettina. Bettina, when I met her, she was right on the edge of flourishing and striving. Right on that, that's what her glass ceiling was, was that line. And I showed her the pyramid, and I don't know what I said, but I saw when it went off in her brain. <laughs> and her money thing went click, 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 click. And then because she's now in this green zone, flourishing zone, everything I say, she can see, because her mind is cleared up. And then the only thing I'm encouraging her to do is to check vocabulary, because is the virus words that take people out of flourishing. And as soon as I stop paying attention, I can slip back down. It's called the fallen angel. And unless there's, I'm in an environment where two or more angels are around me to go, Batina, what are you doing? That's why lonely, a, a loner angel is having so much difficulty, Joanne. You need your tribe around you. An angel will have your back. And if there's three, you got two angels covering your back. That's the minimum number of angels that should be moving. Threes. And then if you scale that, you get nine. And if you keep scaling, you get my number, 144,000. That's my critical match. Okay? So this is the new paradigm. Tr trilogy. Triangles. Trialogues. Three. So you got to find your other two angels. Or join the movement. Bettina environment is angel rich. That's why I like coming here because <laughs> every single person is an angel. Half of them are in denial. That's and it's just a matter of time. And I can get them to confess when they start talking. That's why I do the interaction because they hear themselves speak, don't they, Joanne? You hear your mind like talking crap, and you hear it trying be saying who a lot. Like you said, who the first time, the first question, like who? And then I'm like, what, who? You see, it wanted to come home. All right, <laughs> so, sorry, Patina, go ahead. Oh, that was a great example. Uh, hang on one second here. Uh, that was a really great example of an angel knowing the who is the best beep question and that's living it when I live in that intention of who and then the who's who <laughs> then like anything is possible right <laughs> anything absolutely is oh I want to leave one with the distinction this is the distinction that covers it okay for every intention or concern 
There's an angel for that. There's an angel for that. So I'm not clear. Who the angel for that? Raise your hand if you're the angel that makes things clear. Uh oh. <laughs> See, there's an angel for that. <laughs> I'm looking to get relationships sorted out. Who the angel for that? You see, there's a God has got an angel for that, and that angel can hold on the whole market. Do you understand? That's what it means. I'm the angel of clarity. It means all topics related to clarity. I am the authority. So if I'm not in the meeting, you guys are just going around in what land? Data, <laughs> right? But as soon as I'm here and I speak two words, it's over. <laughs> That's the authority of the angel. Who do they think they are? Uh, it's a three-letter word. <laughs> that ends with D. <laughs> right? They're direct messengers from the divine. Therefore, they have the ultimate authority. And the only thing that angels dealing with internally is, am I worthy of such a height? This is a lot, Nigel. You're asking me to step into a very high, and I think I'm flawed. I can, I have flaws. So you know, welcome to earth. That's what's affecting Joanne. She was trying to get it right, <laughs> Joanne. And I was saying, get it wrong, get it wrong. You're allowed to get it wrong on earth. See that? And that's how we practice. Get it wrong first. So I can talk forever because <laughs> <laughs> my money maker works. All right. Um, <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, everyone, it's been wonderful to have you. Thank you for uh, playing along with us here in this wonderful adventure called We Empower You. If you'd like to join us next week, go to weempoweryourlife.com. Click on the calendar tab to join this Zoom meeting. We'll see everybody next week. Bye for now. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.